All right, we're going to get started here with MicroMouse Lecture 4. So today we're going to be talking about IR sensors, and so what they are, and how we're going to use them, and why we use them in MicroMouse. Uh, we're going to talk about the hardware, how each part of the circuit inside the sensor is going to work uh, for both the emitter and the receiver. And then we're going to talk about the software. How do we actually use this sensor and get its data and interpret it? So we're going to do some data processing. So these are where the IRs are on the rat, on your rat. They are not soldered in yet, of course, but uh, that will be part of the assignment, which we'll talk about a little bit later. So without further ado, let's talk about IR sensors. So IR sensors are they're a, a type of distance sensor, and they basically work as follows. An IR um, emitter, which is an LED, will emit some light, and then the nearby objects, such as a wall in your micromouse maze, will reflect that light. So if an object is closer, if you're closer to a wall, it's going to reflect more light. In fact, um, so uh, and that'll somewhat depend on the material. But And so things that are further away or that are darker, they're going to reflect less light. Next part of the circuit, we have an IR receiver, which is also called a phototransistor. That's going to detect that reflected light uh, and that will, ch that will um, trigger a change in voltage uh, that will be read by the microcontroller. And so based on that, we'll actually be able to tell uh, whether we're close to a wall or not. So here's just a quick diagram. We have an emitter, bounces off an object, and then our receiver uh, reads that. So talk a little bit about why IR sensors, but I guess first we have this little animation. So if we're next to a wall, the IR emitter emits some, it bounces off the wall, and our IR receiver sees that. Whereas if there is no wall, our IR emitter just emits out, and maybe some of it will bounce back off of some other extraneous objects, but for the most part, not going to get it. So we can tell whether or not there's a wall there, which will be very useful for us when we get to navigating through a maze. So, what are some pros of IR sensors? What are things that are, they're good at? Well, they're easy to implement. Doesn't require that many co components. It's small, it all fits on the MicroMouse very well. Not too much to worry about there. Also, it's contactless. We don't actually have to touch the wall and get all jumbled around. We can just see if the wall's there or not. And also, we can actually sort of it's an analog value. It's not just true or false. We can kind of get a sense of distance. Are we very close to the wall? Are we not very close to the wall? Uh, that's something that IR sensors are able to do for us. So, however, nothing's perfect. Let's talk about some cons. Um, they are affected by ambient light. Uh, so those of you that saw us talking about MicroMouse, say, at the Engineering Welcome Day or the Enormous Activities Fair, you might know that we didn't have a working demo because we were outside. So they actually, the IRs, aren't going to perform well outside. But luckily, in <coughs> normal circumstances of MicroMouse, you'll be inside. So that's not going to be a huge problem. Another thing, uh, a couple things. It requires some calibration. So again, we're, we're kind of depends on ambient light, might not work super well under certain conditions, certain materials, and it's not going to behave linear, lin linearly, so like the voltage values aren't going to directly correspond to how far we are from a wall, so you have to do a little bit of adjustment there. And then there'll be some variations between sensors, uh, even if they're all the same, have the same exact circuit setup, they might not behave exactly the same, so it'll all be a little bit of adjustment. Um, so you need to account for that in code. And also different materials, say the mazes last year, which were made of cardboard, versus the mazes this year, which were made of plastic. Um, they'll behave a little bit differently. So that was a, those are some things you need to watch out for when using IR sensors. But in general, uh, it all sort of works out for MicroMouse. So uh, we're going to use them. All right.
Okay, um, now we're going to talk a little bit about the analog circuits and get into the meat and bones of these uh, IR receivers um, and emitters. And the first circuit, there's two halves. We're going to talk about the emitter part first. Um, and here it is. I know, it's a schematic. And it's not going to make a lot of sense right now, but we're going to go through every single component and talk about what they're all there for. Um, just, you know, to uh, give you a vague idea of how this circuit works. Um, for now, let's talk a little bit about like an overview of how uh, the emitter is supposed to work. Um, so obviously, as we explained before, we said that it uses an IR LED to emit light. You might see that IR emitter there. Um, the other thing we have is a transistor to switch it on and off. And this is because the microprocessor can't supply enough current alone, um, just like our motors. Uh, we need something to switch the, the LED on and off um, instead of just our pins. So we have a transistor there. Um, and then essentially the way that it works is that we turn our MCU pin high, that's going to turn the transistor on and, event and turn our um, LED on. Okay, so that's the uh, basis overview of how this works. Now let's go a little bit into some of the details um, on, on this guy. So let's see. Our first part is the emitter right here, our LED. Um, it's this part here. Uh, it's got a link to DigiKey, so when you look on the slides later, you can go and read all about it if you want. But here's some of the uh, important specifications here. Uh, we have um, our forward voltage, which is 1.3 volts. That just means how much uh, voltage we should, uh, that this guy's going to use when we supply it with, um, uh, you know, that's, that's how much voltage it'll use uh, based on, like, that's the ideal that we want. Um, our max current is 100 milliamps, so that's the maximum amount of current that we can push through this thing before it will pop. Um, 880 nanometers is the wavelength of the light um, that it emits. 880 is in the infrared uh, spectrum, so you won't be able to see it with your naked eye. Um, and then 15% viewing angle is basically just like the, uh, the way that it's going to disperse out into the, um, uh, the, the lens of the light is going to be about 15 degrees. I should have put an image here, but we don't have that. <laughs> um, but anyways, that's some specs about our uh, emitter. And then next we have our MOSFET, or the transistor that I called it in the previous slide. A MOSFET is just a, um, a special type of transistor. Um, but our specific MOSFET is this guy, right? Oh, yeah, there it is. Um, is this guy. Again, data sheet on the slides. Um, and essentially what this is here for is to, you know, switch the current flow on and off uh, for our LED here. If you see, it's kind of like right in, in the uh, path of where the LED from uh, VCC, the R1 LED, or switch, and then ground. So it's going to turn it on and off. Uh, as I said, switch on and off. And it turns on when our MCU pin is high. Yeah. OK, so let's see. The next uh, component we have here are these capacitors here. Those are kind of you know something that not a lot of people have seen before. You've seen like an LED circuit, but why do we have capacitors here? Well, they're essentially uh, bypass capacitors, C1 and C2 right here. Um, and what that means is essentially they're stabilizing the supply voltage uh, from, from our switching and from our LED. So um, when we turn on the LED, there's going to be a little bit of a, a drop in voltage, and we're trying to smooth that out. Um, and uh, the other thing that they're also useful for is reducing our turn on time for our IR emitter. Um, that's just a nice thing to have so that, you know, we can record as many readings as fast as possible. Alrighty. Um, and now Dominic will talk to you about our, some of our resistors here. Alright, yeah, so you may have noticed that we've talked about a lot about what's in the, the circuit, but we actually have three resistors here that we haven't talked to you about. As it turns out, they all um, do slightly different things. So the first one that we're going to talk about is our LED, cur cur LED current limiter. limiter. Right here. <laughs> OK. Uh, so that's going to, well, limit the current through the LED. So we, we want to do a little bit of calculations to sort of show uh, where that value comes from. So our voltage source, VCC, is going to be our 3.3 volts. That's where we're going to want to run this off of. Whereas um, pr from the previous slide, our IR emitter has a forward voltage of 1.3 volts. That means that uh, when it's wired in this direction, um, the drop across that emitter is always going to be 1.3 volts. So we want to have a desired current of 40 milliamps. It was um, 100 milliamps is the maximum that our IR emitter can take, so 40 will allow it to be nice and bright without um, damaging it over time. Do a little bit of subtraction, get 2 volts. Now just apply our Ohm's law. 
we get around 50 ohms. So, and rounding up to the next standard resistor size, we get 51 ohms. That's how we decided the value of this resistor here. Um, but to uh, re recapitulate what it actually does, of course, uh, it's just limiting the amount of current that can go through to not burn out our LED. If you've ever seen an LED or a resistor in series with an LED in like a simple circuit, this is exactly what happens to it. We have a couple more resistors here though. Um, next we're going to talk about R2, that's our pull down resistor. So we have this, um, we have our transistor here and so our transistor will actually turn on um, our IR emitter or if, if our microcontroller pin is low, it'll turn off. So this will actually, in the case that our microcontroller pin is in an off state, this will make sure to pull our transistor down to ground. And notice this is a huge value. That's because if our microcontroller pin is on, we don't want it to short up to ground. Uh, barely any current is gonna go through there because it's such a big resistance value and it'll still go to our transistor and turn it on as we previously described. But, so, keep that current draw low, the high resistance, and uh, yeah, if our microcontroller pin happens to be floating because we did a bad job programming, then it's just pulled down to ground, and we don't have our LEDs turning on when we don't want them to turn on. Alright, we've got one more resistor to talk about. It's right here. Um, it's again related to this transistor here. Um, and so basically this limits the current from the microcontroller to the MOSFET so that we don't damage our transistor. Can't just run tons of current in there. So we got about a hundred ohm resistor just chilling right there. All right, so now Tim's gonna talk a little bit about our IR receiver, which will take in the light that we have just emitted. And before we do that, does anyone have any questions about the emitter circuit? I know that's a, a lot of components and a lot to digest. So if you have any questions, ask them now or ask them later. Yeah, what's up? We don't have to build that circuit, right? It comes with the emitter. Yeah, it's, uh, if you know on your rat PCB, it'll be already like pre-traced out. Okay. You just have to solder the right things okay. to the right places. Um, however, when we do eventually make our own mice, you're gonna have to like, you're gonna have to make that schematic and figure out your PCB traces, and then you know, do the same thing essentially, um, and put it put it all together. Okay. So yeah. Any other questions? Nope. Okay, then I'll talk a little bit about our uh, our receiver right here. Oh yeah, what's up? Mm -hmm. uh, you mentioned about the MOSFET. Is, are we using GFS or NFS? Sorry, what? Is it NFS or GFS? Uh, it's N. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, our IR receiver circuit. Let's go. Okay, here it is. A lot simpler, isn't that nice? Um, but anyways, here's the TLDR and how it works. Um, so we have our photo transistor here and that measures our uh, reflected IR light. And um, our resistor here creates a voltage divider and um, essentially the way that it works is that the voltage between is measured by our microcontroller at that out pin um, and the microcontroller's analog to digital converter. I'll explain in a little more detail about how that uh, Q1 actually changes here right on the next slide. Speaking of which, ta-da. <laughs> and anyways, uh, so here's our uh, Q1 photo transistor. Um, and a little bit of specs about it. Let's see. Let's see. Okay. Um, yeah, so this one is centered on 870 nanometers, if you remember. Our other one, our transmitter was, what was it, 880 nanometers. Um, so those are about the same, which means that we're going to have a good amount of uh, sensitivity between those two uh, paired together. Um, and then we also have our 50 milliamps max current. That just means that the maximum current that will flow through this guy when it's at full brightness is going to be 50 milliamps or like 100 milliamps um, at max if you tried to uh, apply a higher voltage. Um, and then also we have our 70 volts here max collector to emitter voltage. And that just means that um, across uh, the two pins of Q1, the max that you can have there is 70 volts for it to still work. Um, in our case, it's only like 3.3, so we're chilling. Um, so essentially the way that this guy works is that the more IR light that is thrown at it, um, then the more current is going to be passed through Q1, the, the more like the switch is going to be turned on essentially. Um, 
So as that happens, what's going to happen is that uh, the voltage across Q1 is going to decrease as you get brighter and brighter. And of course, uh, as we know, um, we're going to have a voltage divider here where some of the voltage is going to be uh, across Q1 and some of it's going to be across R1. And essentially what we're doing is that we know R1 so we can measure the volt, knowing the voltage between the two, we can kind of figure out uh, how bright our LED, our, our IR light is. Um, and speaking of R1, let's talk about R1. Um, so as I said before, it's our voltage divider. Oh look, there's a value on it now. <laughs> um, anyways. So yeah, as I said, uh, more current passed through Q1 is going to turn into less voltage drop across it because the switch is going to be more on. So it's, it's, it's going to um, allow more voltage to go through R1 instead of Q1. And essentially what that's going to do is allow us to measure that voltage using our out pin, our analog to digital converter. And we'll see that, OK, as we increase brightness, our voltage at R1 is going to increase over time. Um, so that's essentially how that works. And as for choosing a value here, it's a little complicated. Um, as you can see, we have 1.8K. But essentially what we do know is that um, we want to keep our maximum current through uh, our Q1 to be less than 50 milliamps as uh, is required by the spec. Um, and then the only other constraint we really have is to you know, maximize our value range while also keeping the power draw down. And that essentially means that um, we want to be able to read anywhere from like 0 to 3.1 volts on, on that out pin um, that our microcontroller can read. And yeah, so basically we just want to choose a value that's greater than 65 ohms. And I got that number um, from you know figuring out, OK, our max across R1 is going to be 3.3 volts. Um, and I want that to be less than 50 milliamps. So you just get 65 ohms when you do the math. Um, so essentially, that's the reason why. And then we choose 1.8k ohms. It's kind of arbitrary. You could choose 10k, uh, 10k ohms as well, um, but essentially the the reason is just um, you want let it would be less current flowing through and therefore burning less current through the circuit. Um, so it's nice to to uh, alleviate that power draw. Um, yeah. So uh, that's why we chose 1.8k ohms. All right. That's it for the receiver. Um, does anyone have any questions about that before we move on? I know that was also a little confusing. Yeah, what's up? So what exactly is the phototransistor like collecting? So it's, it's, uh, res it's responding and, uh, to the light that is hitting it. So our, our, um, when, when you get it, <laughs> it's responding to 870 nanometers. So essentially it's like, uh, increasing or decreasing its, I don't want to say resistance, because that's uh, technically not correct. Um, I'd have to read the data sheet to give you a more elaborate answer. But um, yeah, it's, it's basically, you can treat it as, OK, it's going to have more voltage across it if there's less light attracted, to, or if there's less IR light in this range, 740 nanometers to 1080 nanometers that's hitting it. Does that answer your question? So it's just like measuring how, how many like Yeah. yeah, you can you can think of it really. Um, I mean, and it's reflected in the symbol. It is sort of like a transistor, but instead of being connected to a pin or something, or some sort of third um, third thing going in, uh, it just has this light. So depending on how much light is hitting it, um, particularly IR light, um, it's going to turn more on or more off. So it's sort of just allows us to control how much current is flowing through here, which then will um, affect how much is uh, in being output. Thank you. All right. Okay, any other questions on that? Um, why does phototransistor come before the receiver? Like, like why, what if you switch the receiver? Oh, let's see. Is Think. that like a valid question? Like, switch around? Does it matter? Make a difference? I believe that would, um, hmm, not entirely sure. I'd have to get back to you on that one. Okay. Um, I, I think it may work. It's just the um, the values could end up uh, like it'll it'll have a different range of values. It might. It actually would if it, it would sort of have an opposite. 
effect in that, like, actually, if, if there was less light, it would read higher. And if there was more light, it would read lower. Mm. I think that's just what I'm quickly trying to look at. That could be wrong. Don't quote me on that. <laughs> I'll confirm if that's wrong. <laughs> I'll talk to you. All right. Any other questions? Okay. If not, then we can move on. Okay, to software. All right. Just going to talk a little bit about how the software is actually implemented. How do we use these things? Um, so, well, let's talk about how we read them. So we'll, we'll cover this in more detail in the assignment, but uh, we have four of these receiver or emitter receiver pairs, but we're going to read one at a time. We have to turn our emitter on, uh, read that receiver value. Actually, we'll read it several times and sort of be able to take a nice average so that we know, um, because things can be a little bit random, but t um, taking multiple readings and averaging it out will give us um, a nice reading. They can do that very quickly, actually. And then we'll turn that emitter off, uh, and then we'll uh, go to our next emitter. So we'll be doing this all very quickly. So we, we can read them all very quickly, but we do want to re read one receiver at a time. Uh, and that's to avoid uh, a any um, having multiple emitters on. There'll be multiple sources of that same IR light coming around everywhere. Could could get confusing, and some could bounce off in a weird way and make you think well, there's a wall where there's not a wall. So turn on one at once. Um, let's talk a little bit about how to actually detect a wall. Uh, we can just check for a certain threshold. So you have to experimentally determine it. Um, okay. <laughs> um, so, if you're, say, if you place your mouse in the maze and you're next to a wall, you'll look at that value, or if you're not next to a wall, you'll look at that value, and there should be somewhere, a threshold in the middle, where you can decide, oh, there's a wall there, and you'll use that in your code. Um, there will be some change due to ambient light, so say if you if the maze was like super near the window or something it could behave a little bit differently than if it was in the back of the lab um, but luckily you'll probably be testing on the same place so it shouldn't be too much of an issue uh, some tricks for software you'll want a little bit of a delay between turning on the emitter and reading the IRs so uh, we do have those bypass capacitors in there to make the IRs turn on pretty quick but you still want a little bit of a delay because they're not going to turn on perfectly at the beginning. So uh, you'll need to wait 60 microseconds, which is not very much, but enough that you should have a little bit of delay in your code. Um, as I was saying, you should only turn on one emitter at a time. That way you're not, especially the two in the front, you're not like accidentally reading from the wrong IR. Um, and having that delay um, also serves to avoid that. So don't read them all at the same time. Read them in series with a little bit of a delay in between. Um, also, don't read the IRs in your PID <laughs> control functions. Um, uh, many of you probably haven't started on assignment 3.1 yet, um, but when you do, uh, there'll be this something called SysTick that is running every millisecond. Um, but you don't want things running in there to take very long. So you shouldn't read your IRs in there. You don't even need to read them every millisecond. That's kind of overkill. So read them outside in some of your other functions, and you'll be fine. Don't read them in there, because you could break things. All right, do you have any questions about, well, any of the software stuff or any of the content of this lecture? Next up, we're going to be talking a little bit about logistics and how the rest of this quarter is going to go. Yes, Prem. So, like, um, for the in order to like implement the delay for the IR stuff, do we have to like make get make another statistic function? We'll we'll have a um, delay microseconds function um, for you guys to use because uh, it's a little complicated to to you know uh, have delay in microseconds uh, without it's it's not like a set function. Um, so that'll be explained. All of those software tips and tricks you'll see are explained a lot more in assignment 4.1 and in the code, uh, in the code templates and everything. So you'll be uh, guided on that. Yeah. Okay. 
there's nothing else, then we can talk about some logistics here. Okay? Yeah. So, assignment 4.1, coming soon. Uh, you're going to solder the IR sensors to your rat, assemble the front of the rat. Finally, there'll be something there and not just a bunch of pads. Uh, you'll bless your rat with the ability to see. Um, you'll be able to see the walls of the maze, which of course op opens up many doors for you, including getting your rat competition ready. You'll be able to navigate a simple maze just by being able to see the walls, and that's going to be very exciting. This assignment will be due Monday, week 10. A while from now, because I know we just released assignment 3.1. So uh, you guys got a little while to do this, but it'll be a lot um, towards getting towards the rat competition. Speaking of which, rat competition. <laughs> um, yeah, so the rat competition essentially is our fall uh, mini competition uh, where you're just going to, you know, uh, finally set up and get, get your rat onto a maze and it'll start moving and it'll be a lot of fun. Um, you'll be just navigating a super simple maze, so we're not getting into the details of like maze solving algorithms just yet, but uh, you'll be able to, you know, compete against others to see who's tuned their PID any better. Um, so it'll just be against the other teams uh, here in our micro mouse. Um, and yeah, just uh, mark your calendars. It'll be uh, also during week 10 on December 1st, a Wednesday on week 10. I know, crazy. Um, but yeah, so that's our competition. Get hyped. It'll be a lot of fun because uh, we'll hopefully have a lot of participation and you'll, uh, there'll be, uh, you know, a few small prizes. We'll see, we'll see. Um, so yeah, you know. Okay, cool. Any questions about rat competition or assignment 4.1 real quick? Cool. All right. Oh, whoa, whoa. Yeah, All right. Um, yeah. So uh, as you guys know, probably, hopefully, assignment 2.1 is due tonight uh, at midnight. But uh, so I'm sure you guys, at least a few of you guys, have realized by now that we're a little bit lenient with deadlines. So it's not like if you don't have it done tonight, it's not the end of the world. However, as we just said, the rat competition is week 10, and that's sooner than you think. So please get your stuff on, done on time, because we have set these deadlines to have you be on track to be able to participate in that rat competition, which will be a lot of fun. And that's what kind of what the rat is for. So you're learning a lot of stuff, but you know, stay on track, and you'll be able to uh, be a part of that fun event. So. Anyway. Yeah. <laughs> Get your assignments done. Yeah. Um, yeah. Okay. And then next up, as we said, oh, yeah. Assignment 3.1 has been moved to next Wednesday. It was previously next Tuesday. It's now Wednesday. Congrats. You guys get one extra day. Uh, there was a Smallberg final or, or midterm or whatever, so, so we moved it one day. Um, <laughs> Yeah, so assignment 3.1 will be due then. Uh, we've released that like a couple days ago um, to get PID working and your rat's actually moving around, so that'll be really nice. Uh, we also got our PCB design workshop. Really, really important, because we're not gonna tell you guys too much about how to design PCBs in Eagle, because a ton of projects do it. So it's all in one workshop, so you guys should like really, really go to that. It'll be next Thursday, uh, next Thursday, um, the location is still, is, is it TBD, I think? I think it's Bolter 3400. It's something okay, like it's that. on the calendar. If you it, haven't looked at big, the calendar. It's a big lecture hall in Bolter. It's going gonna, it's yeah. gonna to be a big event, so come so it doesn't look awkward for Sadat and David with having a huge room. <laughs> yeah, this is like a really big room, so so you guys better come. Yeah, what's up? Oh, are they going to record it? I believe so, Yeah, yes. they're going to record it. Okay. But come anyways. <laughs> yeah, what's up? So, sorry, what? Uh, what time is this workshop? Uh, should be. S I asked Sadat and he said 6 or 6.30. I'm pretty sure it's 6.30, though. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Any other questions about the PCB design workshop? We really, re really, really, really recommend you go to that because um, they'll explain to you all the basics and so we don't have to roast you during your PCB design uh, you know, overviews uh, when we eventually go individually, team by team, and tell you. Um, about your fantastic PCB designs and review them. Uh, so don't get roasted. Go to the design workshop um, and uh, learn learn the basics, and that'll be a lot of fun. You guys actually, I think you do design a little bit on your own uh, in that workshop, um, so you'll have something to make and, and you know 
to work on. Okay. Oh, two things. Yeah, next we, uh, chronologically next. Like we already said, assignment 4.1 due, November 29th, we already said that. Um, and then they're at competition. Again, we said that uh, 7 p.m. on December 1st. Ta-da. Uh, and we do have a room for that. We'll, we'll send an announcement about that once we like get the confirmation. Um, but that's the time and the date. So uh, mark your calendars and get ready. Yeah, and as a bit of caution, you might notice that 3.1 and 4.1 is this kind of like a <coughs> bunch of time between them. But it's really not that much time. And it's especially not much time due to the fact that there's Thanksgiving. So just don't forget, stay on top of it. You guys can do it. We There is enough time to get everything done. Um, but I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> this quarter. Yeah. And uh, we'll, we'll, we'll probably also have uh, some work sessions at some point um, due to. Uh, yeah, we'll, we'll yeah. be sure to have the work sessions. A lot of you guys came out last time and the time before, which was great. So we'll continue to have those sort of things to, uh, to get you guys all going, come to lab. Yep. We are yeah. done with lectures for the quarter. So we will be having more work sessions and having the rat competition, but no more lectures this quarter. Uh, no more lectures yet yeah, until next quarter where we're gonna have we'll talk about more stuff. But yeah, more complex things. Yeah. But yeah. So next time rat competition. Get hyped. No <laughs> and thank you guys for coming. Have a nice night. Yay. Cool.